In our last broadcast, we dealt with the question that God raises in Ezekiel 33:11, Why will you die? And yet multitudes of people choose death rather than life. Rather than turning from their sins, repenting to God and exercising faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they choose death. And today we want to continue the theme about choosing life instead of death concerning the account in Mark 10, 46 to 52 of blind Bartimaeus. And we read here how he was sitting by the highway side begging when Jesus of Nazareth passed by and he said, crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And when he came to Jesus, Jesus asked, What wilt thou that I do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Now, men and women today are seeking in many ways to find happiness. They're searching here and there for happiness and contentment. They buy many modern conveniences, washers and automobiles and homes. They build up bank accounts. They take vacations trying to find a little peace and contentment from the busy grind of just living in modern society. They work their fingers to the bone trying to acquire this or that, which they think will give happiness. They say, well, if I just had this or that, I think I would be happy and satisfied. And then there comes a time in most people's lives when they suddenly lose their interest for material things when they stop the mad rush 24 hours a day, seven days a week, trying to acquire material goods that they think is so important. And then they transfer all of their thoughts, desires, efforts, and attention to something else, something you can't buy or you can't borrow or steal. And that is when one loses his or her health, the body becomes sick, afflicted, and diseased. The body is in pain. Now, if you visit your hospitals and your sick rooms, visit those in pain, those diseased, those who are blind and lame, many with no hope of recovery, that is, from medical science, and you ask them what they desire most of all, the answer will always be, not a new home or car, but that I might receive my health back. And so in the case of blind Bartimaeus, he no doubt had other needs, financial needs he could have asked Jesus to help him about. He might have needed a better home or whatever. But he asked for the thing that was uppermost in his heart, and that is the need of his sight, receiving sight. Now, there are two kinds of blindness. One kind Bartimaeus had, the other you may have today and not know it. You can be blind physically and you can be blind spiritually. And it's the latter kind of blindness, spiritual blindness, that destroys the soul and that condemns you to eternity without God. It's this kind of blindness that we really want to discuss in this broadcast because, you see, physical blindness can only keep you from seeing God's world. Spiritual blindness keeps you from seeing God himself. Now, although Bartimaeus was physically blind, he was not spiritually blind because he believed in Jesus Christ as Messiah. You can tell from his expression of faith in him. And then we read that he followed Jesus after he received his sight. Bartimaeus was, in effect, simply asking for physical eyes so that he could look upon the one in the flesh whom he already saw with his spiritual eyes, the eyes of faith. Now, why do I say Bartimaeus already had saving faith as he asked for his physical healing? Well, notice his words again. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus went out of Jericho, there was a great number of people. And then blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Now, he had a saving faith because... When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he said, Jesus, thou art the son of David. Do you see what he's saying? Do you see in these words that there is a confession of faith in Jesus and his claims to be Messiah? Jesus was a Jew. Bartimaeus was a Jew. Every Jew knew the Old Testament prophecies concerning the Messiah who was to come. Every Jew knew that the Old Testament said the Messiah was going to be a son of David. Also, we note here that when Bartimaeus learned that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Now, if you recall how the Pharisees and the religious leaders rejected Jesus because he came from Nazareth, they said, can anything good come out of Galilee because the Messiah is to be born in Bethlehem? 
Well, of course, if they had bothered to check, they would have found out that was true of Jesus. But nevertheless, Bartimaeus did not say with contempt, like the religious leaders, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? No, on the contrary, when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, then he cried out in faith for him to heal him. And so the first thing we see is saving faith in Jesus as Messiah. The second thing I believe we see here is a mark of true conversion. This is seen in verse 48, And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Do you see his persistence? I believe this is one of the marks of true conversion. One of the marks of true conversion is the urgency and persistence upon the part of the sinner or the person who needs help from Jesus, from God, and not to rest until he knows that he has received Christ and obtained his healing from sin. And so just as Bartimaeus persisted until he had his eyes opened so that he could look upon Jesus face to face, so too must you want to see Jesus savingly, just like Bartimaeus wanted to see him if you are to be saved. Bartimaeus cried out so loudly that the multitudes were embarrassed and rebuked him and told him to be still, but their rebuke caused him to cry the more. Jesus, he said, I will not be still. I want to see Jesus. Now, when you've been brought to the place where nothing in this world can stop you from trying to see Jesus, then rest assured you're not going to be disappointed any more than Bartimaeus. But many never see Jesus because they don't really have the great urgency that they ought to have to see him face to face, to see him savingly. Oh, a lot of people know about him historically, and they accept the facts about him with their minds, and they join churches. But we're talking about seeing Jesus with your spiritual eyes so that you can be saved. We're not talking about seeing the Jesus of institutional religion, the Jesus that lets you go on your way after you, quote, accept him, unquote, and live like the world and adopt the ways of the world, a Jesus who does not require separation and holiness and truth as a part of your life. No, we're talking about the Jesus that Bartimaeus saw that day. Some, when they try to see Jesus, the Jesus of the gospel, are rebuked by their families or by their friends or by others because they're wanting to find the true Jesus, see the one that is presented in the Bible. But people try to oppose that and present religious substitutes. Like the JDS teachers, they teach that Jesus died spiritually. He became a sinner on the cross, unregenerate. He had to be born again. Now, a lot of people have seen that Jesus, the Jesus of the JDS teachers, JDS standing for Jesus died spiritually, which is their heretical doctrine. Many people see that Jesus, and they're blinded to the Jesus of the Bible who was holy and pure, and his sacrifice most holy unto God. But those who find the true Jesus are those who are brought into his presence by the Holy Spirit, and who shut their ears to all of these counterfeits and people who are rebuking them for wanting to go all the way with God and to separate from the world and its ways to walk in faith as God requires if we're going to be saved. I mean, walk in faith, trust in God for everything from healing to your finances. Now, Christ saves those who are willing to persist in their desire to find him to see the truth. God said, you shall search for me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Now, how else do we see the faith of Bartimaeus? Note again, verses 49 to 50. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they call the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And Bartimaeus, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Now, it's pretty obvious that Bartimaeus had faith that Jesus would heal him simply because he cast away his garment. What does that signify? Well, Mark says he was a beggar. That means he's poor, and as a beggar, he would need his garment. In fact, it was one of the most valuable treasures that men owned in those days. It kept them warm at night, and it sheltered them from the sun. It was their bed. They would lie on it. Evidence of the faith of Bartimaeus that he was going to receive his sight, that he would be healed, is seen in the fact that he cast away his beggar's garment. You see, if he had not believed that, he would have remained blind and then could not have seen to have found his garment again. At least that's a possibility. Now, what goes under the name of faith today often lacks this element of complete faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You see, Bartimaeus cast away his garment, which is evidence of his faith that he would be healed, but he's also casting away his beggar's garments because he knew he would no longer need or want them after he had received his sight, he could go to work. But too many today without his faith are not sure that Jesus can heal them or save them eternally. They're not sure that his blood is sufficient to wash away completely all of their sins. They try to hold on, therefore, to their beggar's rags just in case they may need them to help beg their way into heaven. I mean by this that their beggar's rags are symbolic of their own self-righteousness, their dead works. Instead of trusting God completely in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, they insist on holding on to their own garments of busyness with church work, religious programs, self-righteous activities, somehow believing that they'll need these to get them into heaven. But to receive your spiritual sight, to see Jesus savingly, means you must do as Bartimaeus and show enough faith that you're willing to cast aside your beggar's rags, that is, rags of men's doctrines and religious programs and activities, and cast yourself only on Jesus Christ, that you might receive your spiritual sight. Now, as we said in reply to Jesus' question, what will you have me to do for you? Bartimaeus could have asked for, well, one of two things. He could have asked for alms. After all, he was a beggar. When Jesus said, What do you want from me? He said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. Now, we need to see the significance of what he's saying here. From anyone else, Bartimaeus is in effect saying, I would have begged for money, alms. But from you, son of David, from you alone will I ask this, because you alone can grant me this request, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Because, you see, he intended to use this gift of sight to see to follow Jesus. People today still have the opportunity for a little while to ask of Jesus for spiritual sight. They hear of Jesus of Nazareth through the gospel. He's passing by their way through the preaching of the word, through these broadcasts, for example. But too often they're content to keep on begging alms from the world or from the religious system. They desire to obtain things, whether they're religious things or material things, to make them happy or content. That is to say, a religious office or position or some activity in church work satisfies some people religiously, like material things satisfy them in a material or physical sense. People work and strive and beg for all of the things of this world, the attractions, so they can be happy. But they reject the one thing alone which can give them true peace and happiness. They're not willing or interested, as it were, to cry, "'Have mercy on me, thou son of David.'" They do not plead, Lord, let me receive my sight so that I can follow you. 